Thank you, everybody. Wow, Joe, I got the big room. I can't I believe know. it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of overwhelmed here. Um, you know, we had a conversation before lunch about when you should do regulatory, when should it come in. There are, there are issues that we all have to deal with financially. This is not a cheap process to make a medical device. All I can say, as far as software is concerned, implement something as soon as you can. Going backwards is a challenge. Okay, so we're gonna talk today about 62304, um, my little pet number. We saw all the numbers that uh, were put up on the screen before. Uh, 60601, 13485, there's a million different regulations for the FDA out there. I chose to tackle one, 62304, okay? So 62304 is all about software compliance. It is not about quality compliance in your physical device. It is about software. So how many people here have software in their medical device? Wow, okay. How many people stay awake at night worrying about whether your software can hurt your patient? You all should have your hands raised, okay? Software is notoriously naughty, and the FDA feels that way too. And the challenge is, is that you can never get 100% sure that your software quality is perfect and your software cannot hurt somebody. So it's all about managing risk. We've talked about this before. But one of the challenges to keep yourself safe with medical device software is to ensure you do the right thing. So if you do have an issue with a recall, you have an issue with a problem with your software, the FDA can come in and see if you have done it correctly. So one of those uh, things that helps you do that is what I call the recipe, and that's 62304. It is a recipe. So if you have you're developing software, and you're relying just on the CFR, 13485, okay, uh, a risk management process that comes out of ISO, all right, you're not in compliance. You need to take into account 62304. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So, all right, I'm a small company. I don't have the, the money or the time or whatever to do this, I've got to get to market. FDA does not care about the size of your company. If you cannot afford to implement this process, the FDA is not going to help you. Okay, so you have to make sure you understand that. So the keys to success with 62304 is to ensure you implement a process that is compliant to the guidances. Well, everybody says this is a guidance. You know, what's a guidance? Okay, it, I tell everybody that I consult to that a guidance has a very big G. Don't drop it on your foot, okay? The FDA uses 62304 as part of the fulfillment of the documentation required when you do any of your submittals. So you have to have that behind you if you were ever audited, and if you do not present the right types of documentation based on 62304 for your submittal, the FDA is not going to be pleased. So what is 62304? It is a normative standard. It's European. It's US. You actually will see it in China. I've done submittals in China. They're more interested in 62304 than the US is. So if you're going to be doing a submittal to China, consider that if you're not 62304 compliant, you will not be able to do that. And a lot of people say, well, where did the 62304 come around? I've never heard of this. It's been around since 2008. Now, the FDA has not necessarily been concerned about 62304 prior to, say, 2011, but their auditors are now being trained on 62304, and that's what they're looking for. 
Um, and one of the other issues that I heard talking about, well, CE mark is really easy to get in Europe. Let's go get a CE mark and then we'll worry about this later when we've made revenue in Europe. Well, 2015, and I may actually have a mistake on here because I learned something new this uh, conference. 2015, 134.85 has one little line in it, okay, that says, for your software development process, you need to be 62304 compliant. So a lot of people are relying on a CE mark for their software-enabled uh, medical devices are going to be in difficulty as that starts phasing in. So what is the purpose? What is the purpose of 62304? Why bother? Well, much of the recalls that medical devices have are starting to be software. The FDA is not pleased about this, and they wanted to put in place a methodology to control what is called the software life cycle. Okay? And this is really to give a common framework to all of what we're doing. Software can be an art. The implementation depends on the ability of your software developers to understand how to actually implement the software. But the design of the software is not unique. It solves problems. And 62304 wants you to be sure you've identified the problems, how you're going to solve them before you're starting to code. Ad hoc coding is not something that the FDA is looking for. Granted, you do have to do some proof of concept. We talked about that. And that's OK. Your software development process starts when you start implementing these controls. Okay. So what is the field of application for this? Software is specifically around uh, this is 6234 specifically around medical device software, and that's software within a medical device and software as a medical device itself. I prepared a very large slide deck. This is a slide deck that I use, but I know we don't have a lot of time. I want to get you to understand what is really the key to uh, 62304, and then we can um, if there are any questions or whatever, we can talk about this. But you will get this entire slide deck, which I think is, uh, I think is very key to understanding 62304. OK, so what are the keys to compliance to 62304? Uh, my mentor was actually part of writing the 62304 um, uh, stuff for Amy as it is. And so I say to people, I've been doing this a long time. But the man who wrote it, to me, is really the, you know, the, the guiding force behind what I know. So I am his student. And what he says is that 62304, you need to have procedures in place that mirror exactly what the guidances say. No more, no less. This is not bringing in your mythology from another company. This is not bringing in mythology from a major medical uh, development organization. This is understanding the intent of 62304. Uh, create plans for each one of the software life cycles. Uh, produce inputs and outputs that the life cycle demands. And understand the requirements for something called soup and cots. And then there are two more things. Use compliant templates as one way to get there. And also ensure the process is repeated for each release of the software. So that's basically 62304. Uh, there's 24 pages of shells in the, uh, the guidance itself. Uh, so it is a prescribed process rather than a suggested process. So that's what I have for you today. We had a quick time to. You did a really nice it? job. And, Thank uh, you. For future fast round people, this is the way you do it. That was a perfect amount to whet our appetite. Mark, you have a question? We have time yes. for one. Uh, what does soup and cots stand for? Okay, soup and cots. Most of the most people understand software off the shelf, commercial off the shelf software, and that's how it was referred to. They're a non-product software, but the FDA now refers to. 
to it as soup, which is software of unknown provenance. And um, that refers to anything, Joe's little tricky uh, tool that he uses to do a packet sniffing, all the way up to if you're using like a BLE sniffer or BLE stack for communications. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear from Nancy.